Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, just introducing the concept of force couples and how we can represent force couples as moments. So basically, if we have two forces that have equal magnitudes, opposite directions, and different lines of actions, like exactly what we have in here, if these two forces are acting on some circular object, uh, we call that a force couple. So they, they tend to cause rotation, but no translation. So a good way to think of this, or a good analogy to think of, is a screwdriver. So basically when you grab a screwdriver and you twist it to, uh, to screw in a screw, um, you're applying force, uh, but you're not actually pushing the screwdriver from side to side or anything like that. You're actually just introducing a moment uh, that's actually going to drive that screw into the wall. So with that said, it's important to say that the vector sum of a force couple is zero. Uh, basically, in the x direction or whatever direction we have these parallel forces drawn in, they'll cancel each other out, so we're not going to have this object tending to drift either way. And the moment exerted is uh, the moment exerted is the same about any point uh, on the object. And so that one's a little bit weird, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So if we want to find what the moment is that this force couple exerts about uh, this point O at the center of our uh, circular object here, we can do that. So we would find uh, the moment about point O and we would define some positive sense for our moment. So basically if we're tending to rotate this object in the counterclockwise direction, that would be a positive moment. Um, but you can quite clearly see here actually that if we applied these two forces, um, we would actually be causing this object to rotate in the clockwise direction. So we know that these forces are going to be causing a positive, or a negative moment, sorry. So we can do it individually, like we have been in the past, where we analyze the moment caused about some point uh, by each force individually. Um, I guess we should probably draw on uh, the distance here. So let's say that, um, let's say that this has a diameter here of, oh, let's say 200, millimeters. Okay, so that's 0 0.2 meters. All right, so if we wanted to figure out the moment uh, caused by this bottom force here, uh, the, about O, it would just be the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, which is 0 0.1 meters. 0 0.1 meters. Uh, and then times the magnitude of the force, which is 10 kilonewtons. And then we just have to figure out well, this would actually be tending to make this object want to rotate in that way, so in a clockwise sense. Uh, so this would actually be creating a negative moment. Then looking at the top force about the moment it would be creating about 0 0.0, well, again, we would have exactly the same thing. We'd have 0 0.1 meters. Uh, and actually, you can see that this would be creating a clockwise rotation as well about 0, 0.0, so that's another negative moment. So there we go. We have another 0 0.1 meters times the magnitude of that force, so 10 kilonewtons. And we can see that this will just give us uh, negative one, uh, well, negative one kilonewton meters uh, minus one kilonewton meters. And basically will just give us the final answer here of negative two kilonewton meters. This is exactly the same thing uh, the negative sign, uh, we could also write it as just 2 kilonewton meters, but include that it's actually a clockwise direction because this clockwise direction is the same as a negative, uh, the negative of this positive, which is counterclockwise. All right. Now, that we could do that, but uh, usually when we're, when we're looking at force couples, what we do is we treat them together as a single force couple. We don't really break them out into two individual forces when we're calculating moments. It's just a bit of a quicker way to do the calculation. And when we do that, when we recognize that we have a force couple, so we have two forces with equal magnitudes, opposite directions, and different lines of actions, then all we do to find the moment about point O, or really, as you'll see in a minute, any point in the, in the object that it's acting on, uh, is we take just the magnitude of one of the forces because they're the same. They're both 10 kilonewtons. That's one of the requirements. So we just take the magnitude, just like that, and then we multiply it by the distance between the two. So it's actually times 0 0.2 meters. And then we have to assign, we have to figure out which, if this will be causing a positive or negative moment. And we just do that by inspection. And clearly this would be tending to rotate in the, the clockwise direction. So we get that negative sign because that's opposite what we said is positive. And then just 10 times negative 2, 
we get negative two kilonewton meters. So there you go. When we when we see force couples, when we recognize them, that's usually the method that we'll use to figure out what the moment that they're causing about some point in the object. Now I did say that uh, the moment exerted by a force couple is the same about any point in the object, and that sounds really weird. But let's go ahead and we'll try and figure out what the moment uh, is, uh, what the moment is um, that these forces are causing about point A and also about point B. So to do that, actually, we will split them up because um, just to, just to prove the point, I guess, because we can see here the line of action of this lower force passes through A. So it, this force by itself will not cause a moment about point A. So in total, when we consider both of these uh, forces, then only the top force here will be exerting a moment about point A. So moment about point A. And when we look at that, so bottom force doesn't affect it. Top force, well, it's just, it's going to be a clockwise rotation around it. So it'll be negative. And then we have 10 kilonewtons, the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the force, which is 0 0.2 meters. And much to our surprise, negative two kilonewton meters. So to collectively, for all of the forces acting on this object, uh, we're also experiencing a negative two kilonewton meter moment about point A. If we do the same thing for point B, so we have the moment about point B, well, the same logic applies. This moment, this force by itself won't actually induce any moment about point B because the line of action passes through point B. So the only force that will be inducing a moment about point B is this bottom force, and we get exactly the same situation. So we have negative 10 kilonewton meters, or sorry, negative 10 kilonewtons, and again, it's negative because this force would tend to make this object want to rotate clockwise about B if it was able to rotate about B, uh, and then times the distance, the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force from that point in question, again, 0 0.2 meters. And there you go, we're seing, again, uh, a negative two kilonewton meter moment. And that is the moment caused by both of these forces about point B. It just happens that only one of them actually acts on it. And I guarantee you, if if we have this point and this point and this point, any any point at all, any point in here uh, will experience uh, two kilonewton meters. And you can try, you can pick somewhere halfway in between or somewhere over here. It won't matter because it's always the perpendicular distance to the line of action. So it's a little weird, but because this is basically the same thing as just applying a moment of two kilonewton meters in the clockwise direction, we could place that moment basically anywhere on this object because it's not translating it in any specific way. Um, it's kind of a weird property of applying a moment or applying a force couple to an object is that really you could apply it anywhere on the object and you would still experience you know, as long as the geometry is all the same for like the distance between the force couple, um, you could apply it anywhere on the object and still get that same moment. All right, I will see you guys in the next video and we will do another force couple example problem and uh, hopefully hit this idea home. See you guys there.